at the bank making money, making moves. Machines with tools and drills making grooves. Missions impossible. That's lots of boy. Hello and welcome back to In the Green with Investor. Today, my guest is Investor Super user Tom Quinlan. Tom has been one of the app's most successful users, which has led to him gaining thousands of followers on the platform. Here is our conversation. Hey, Tom, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? I am fantastic. So let's get right into it. What was your first experience in your life with investing? When I was 23 years old, I landed a job in Jacksonville, Florida. And after 90 days of working there, I was asked if I wanted to start, you know, a retirement program. And so I did. And then after about six months after that, I started realizing that within a growth mutual fund and a regular mutual fund, they were doing well. But I started talking to the individual that was managing that. And he kind of explained the stock market to me. And I started taking just money out of my check and investing it into different ETFs that he recommended. But it wasn't until really last year with the app that I really got involved with the stock market. And how did you first find out about the app? I found out about it because I was doing some research online, believe it or not, about the lottery. (laughs) So I was thinking about, okay, well, if I won the lottery and I have X amount of money, what am I going to do with all of this money? And so after doing a bunch of research on, line i was then just relaxing kind of looking at some things on facebook and investor popped up so i got on the investor app and from there it, i just got hooked what was your initial experience when in say the first month you were on the app like it was really difficult i had absolutely no idea what was going on you know when i first originally went on the app you have to choose the most popular stocks You know, so in my brain, I had really didn't have any idea of what was about to happen. So you're just, you download the app, it says pick stocks. So I did, you know, stocks like Apple, Facebook, I I basically picked the FANG and then I got into it and I just kind of held on to those and then started watching the community and started following Hunter. I don't know how I came across Hunter, but I did. And Nick, Christine, Kevin Barnes. Uh, a few other people, and just started watching what they were doing. I, I really honestly had no idea. I didn't even know what the sell button was until like six months into using the app. I had no idea what that button was. I didn't know that you could sell a stock. And I still to this day don't believe in selling a stock. I'll do it on the app once in a blue moon when I really feel like something's going to drop and I want to make some extra cash. But I really focus on that buy button because that's really honestly all I can do. I don't have a, an account that allows me to short stop. Right. And what are some of the ways you've seen yourself grow in the course of the year or so you've been on the app? The one has been earnings, um, you know, kind of being in business myself, tracking finances and is really important. So I tend to really like earnings. So I tend to follow earnings. I post earnings. Uh, I post what companies are going to be, you know, posting earnings. And then I like to read into what the earnings are. But at the end, I kind of like to hear about where they're going to be going in the future, what they're going to be doing. It helps me in my business because it gives me ideas. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say earnings and is the big portion of, of how I work with the app. I know that from following you, you post a lot about earnings and other people have mentioned your knowledge of earnings. Could you explain to someone who maybe doesn't understand a lot about earnings reports or investing, what are you looking for and what do you get out of looking at a company's earnings report? We're looking for, you know, whether they're going to beat the estimated earnings or they're going to post a loss on estimated earnings. But then it's reading into why. Sometimes a loss, you know, posting a loss on earnings isn't always a bad thing. Um, And that's why you'll see a a company post a loss, but then they'll rally. 
um, might have something to do with dumping a particular asset or uh, getting rid of a, a liability. Um, sometimes it's, it's news on a lawsuit that they were able to finally divulge. So though they had to put out a bunch of cash to get rid of a lawsuit, it's now past them and, and they're able to move forward. So you kind of see the stock rally. It's guidance on where they're moving forward. I mean, when you're looking at something like Snap, for example, uh, a stock, what last year that just could not get over that $16 threshold, they needed advertising sales. So you're looking into where they're going to be generating revenue. What are they doing now? Are they doing the same old thing all the time and they never have any new ideas? Where are they going? So I'm looking at that. I'm looking at what they have as ideas for the future. So even though they might post a loss, if I read that they have a really good solid plan for growing sales in the next quarter or the following quarter, then I might start really watching them and looking at particular price points. Gotcha. Thank you for that. What would you say in your experience is the biggest mistake that a first time investor user or just investor in the market makes? Well, I mean, I can only say that the big mistakes that I make it's being too quick. It's saying that, you know, I look at something and, you know, oh, it's down 5% today, or I look at the chart and it looks like it's low, but I didn't really look into any news and I just bought it. Like right now, my, my worst stock that I'm holding right now is Marathon Oil. Okay, I, I should not have bought Marathon Oil. I really felt like the oil sector was gonna kind of take off this month. And it looks like today, it might actually start moving. But uh, to hold them long term has been really, really difficult. It really is hard to look at a stock that's down 30% and say, gosh, how do I not get rid of it? But I have one, I have $2 billion on my account. So when I'm down 30%, I'm talking about $16 million that I'm going to lose if I just sell, not just $5,000 or $10,000. So I have to kind of hold and hope, you know, that something's going to happen or some news is going to come along and I'm going to be at least be able to uh, gain at least half my money back before the end of the month. So patience. I think patience is the big key thing that I don't know if a lot of the people on the app, you know, have. There's a lot of people that you know, we'll watch a chart and it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. They're buy it or sell it high, buy it low, sell it high. And they're just hitting that button. And I don't feel like you're really learning anything if you're doing that. But I'm very different. There are a lot of people on the app that are day traders. And God bless them. I, I, I wish I could do it. I cannot do it. I, I am an individual who likes to buy a bunch of stocks and hold on to them. And I carry them over month after month after month and then I tend to hold on to the ones that every month no matter what price you buy in at tend to be performers and those are the ones that I hold on my real portfolio so a good 60% of what's on my investor portfolio I actually hold in my real portfolio how has your real portfolio performed pre-investor to now after having your experience with investor it went, it went, it did it much better. I understand it a lot better. One of the things that happened was back in, I want to say it was October. I think it was in October of last year is when Kevin Barnes had explained the VIX to me. I really didn't understand what the VIX was. And Kevin Barnes explained it to me. He's like, Tom, just, just buy a you know, couple shares of the TVIX. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went in and I did it. And I lost some money on it, but I just held it because, you know, he was like, you should hold on to this. The, the market eventually is going to go down and you'll be happy to own that. Well, I held on to it. And yes, I lost a good 60% of everything else that I was holding, but that VIX skyrocketed of course. And then uh, I ended up breaking even, if not making a little bit more money. 
So if it wasn't for that VIX, I would have lost a ton of money in March when the market crashed. And could you explain for listeners who might not know what a VIX is? Yeah, so VIX is so, you know, using some of the, the regular platforms that are out there, such as DriveWealth, for example, you are unable to hit the sell button and actually sell a stock. So what the VIX is, is it's almost like a, an automatic short. So you're buying into multiple other people that are shorting, like the S&P, for example, or the Dow or the NASDAQ. So a VIX is a short. There's also the SQQ. So I know a lot of people buy and sell the ETF QQQ. And there's the SQQQ, which is a short. Is it the, I think it's a NASDAQ. So, so I tend to play those when I think the market's going down. End of last month was a good example. I pulled out a lot of stocks just before it dragged and I bought into the VIX and took those and that SQQ. And um, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a way to buy into a stock that allows you to short the market, <laughs> I think is the best way to explain the VIX. Thank you for that explanation and clarification. My final question to you today is, what has been your favorite part about the whole investor experience? There's been a few things. I, I say the community is definitely, definitely my favorite. I learned so much just from the average individuals that are on the app from when anyone posts something and then you read within the comments people's thoughts you know it gives you a different perspective so i'll look at something i'll be like huh, i haven't thought of that so and then i'll tend to read a little bit more uh even on things i might disagree on uh, i know i could be very bullish on certain things and i can be very bearish on others tesla is one i think everybody knows i tend to be very bearish on so I've kind of changed and the community made me change my mindset on it. You know, I've never really been a, an individual that liked Tesla or liked, you know, Elon Musk and the community itself kind of convinced me to like them. So I would have to say the community is the number one reason that I have a tendency to get on the app every single day. Gotcha. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast today. Well, thanks for having me. I am not a financial advisor and my comments should never be taken as financial advice. Investments come with risk, so always do your research and analysis beforehand.